Hi everyone, this is Hibba from My Little Journal, and today I am back sharing a video working in my Week in the Life journal. I did want to start by thanking Remarkable2 for sponsoring this video, and I wanted to share with you a quick flip through of my Week in the Life journal and what I've already set up. I also want to speak on how I've been using my Remarkable2 hand in hand with my Week in the Life journal. As a paper crafter and a lover of paper, we all know that paper is the ultimate tool for thinking. And writing is one of my favorite forms of self-care. So I love the feel of paper. I love to have a place for me to hold all my thoughts, my journaling, my notes, and Remarkable 2 does that for me. One way I was able to keep up with my Week in the Life project was to upload the PDFs to my Remarkable 2. I love having the digital form of any project I'm creating if I can, and it was so easy to upload the PDFs to my paper tablet. Believe me, I am not tech savvy and it was a very easy process. But what I loved about the digital form was I was able to journal and fill out my timeline as I was out and about. So if there was something important that I didn't want to miss or forget, I can just use or open my tablet and fill in all the little gaps that needed to be filled out. And when I come back home, I can just add them to my Week in the Life project. It was such a fun and easy way to keep up with this project. And also, I love that it still feels like paper and it looks like my handwriting. Now, if you're not a fan of your own handwriting, the beauty of the Remarkable 2 is that it will convert it to text. So your handwriting will turn into text. And when you print it out, it looks all neat and pretty but you can keep your handwriting if you want to, probably print these out and create your own Week in the Life journal just by using the digitals and I just love that. I also love that Remarkable 2 has pen options so you can choose from ballpoint pen to fine liners, markers, highlighters. You have so many different options. So basically you're not walking around with a pencil case. You just need your Remarkable 2 paper tablet. And you have all those options. And again, you can print this out and create your own little journal maybe slide them into a album if you wanted to. So I really have been enjoying using my Remarkable 2 to keep up with my Week in the Life project. It has really made the process so much easier. And I also just love that I can doodle and erase as many times as I want and not even have to worry about it. So if you're looking for a paper tablet that still feels like paper, your handwriting still looks the same, you can read from, you can take notes, you can even sign documents on, this is the paper tablet for you. As I said earlier, I am not tech savvy, but this tablet has been so easy to use and I recommend it for any documenter or journaler. But anyways, you guys, let's move on to my process video where I'm going to be using my paper tablet to document Thursday in my Week in the Life project. I basically had all my journaling set and ready, and I'm just gonna transfer them to my journal. Now, if you've been watching my Week in the Life process videos here on YouTube and Instagram, you know that I've been sticking to the same color for each day. So Thursday is green, so I'm basically gonna be using some green ink and markers. I'm gonna start by stamping 16 and Thursday. I've been using the Paper Person Shop uh, stamp sets. I believe they are called Alberta and Highline stamp set. As always, I will be linking everything I use and mention in the description box for you. But once I stamp 16 and Thursday, I'm gonna grab the filler stamp and grab some really beautiful green ink from Studio Calico to fill out the 16. I've been asked about what inks I'm using throughout this journal, and I've been trying to stick to Studio Calico color theory inks because they don't bleed through. They might ghost, but they don't bleed through. So I love these ink pads when working in journals with thinner paper. So I'm done with stamping my date. I'm gonna move on to our gratitude and feelings page. So for this spread, I usually use my stamps and journaling. I'm gonna start by stamping a pill bottle because I'm always so grateful for medication when I wake up with a headache. So I actually started with a headache that day 
And by the end of the day in the evening, I started noticing my eye throbbing. And the next morning I woke up with a swollen eye. So you're going to see the swollen eye <laughs> on Friday. But anyways, I add my journaling. I've been using this arrow to point to certain things. I love using arrows in my journals. I always feel like it's a great way to point to moments or journaling or photos or whatever the case is. So I end up stamping the arrow and it's a great place for me to add color as well. But I'm going to be also stamping a coffee pot because I'm so grateful for my coffee, especially when you wake up with a bad headache. Thursday was also all about watching Stranger Things with the kids. So I went fetching for a stamp set that represents watching and I found a streaming uh, stamp set and I just literally just stamped that and stamped series and I will add my journaling and call my gratitude side done. Honestly, for me, I know a lot of people take this uh, pretty seriously and just journal about all the things that happened that day that they were grateful for, which you should be doing. But for me, I keep it very simple and it's the simple things that I'm grateful for. It doesn't have to be something huge or big that day for me to be grateful for. Anyways, moving on to the feelings, I grabbed this stamp set from the paper person shop. It has a bunch of stamps about emotions and feelings, and I thought it was perfect for this side of my spread. So I'm going to stamp a meh and okay and happy because I did start my day feeling yucky from my headache, and I started feeling better throughout the day. And then I was pretty happy by the end of the day because I spent a lot of time with my kids in the evening. Grabbing my Tombow marker to add in a little bit of color to my spread and to my stamping, and then we can move on to the next few pages. So for my currently page, I've been creating my mind maps. These mind maps, creating them in my passion planner, and I thought it would be fun to add it to my week in the life journal. So I've been using my stamps to kind of represent my day in a glance. Uh, if I don't have a stamp to represent what I want, I will try to doodle it and I just have fun with it, honestly. And then I'll just use my marker to fill in them in and to bring in some of that green to my spread. So basically I stamp a coffee cup, a pool because we got to go to the pool for a little bit, some cleaning supplies because I'm always cleaning and like a laptop to represent work, books to represent me reading watermelon because we ate some really good watermelon that day. So little things like that and I just create my own little mind map. I will grab my pen at the end and just point to certain things. Now these are not in order honestly. Uh, whatever stamp I find to represent a moment I just stamp it but you could definitely stamp them in order to kind of represent your day but honestly I don't really care so I just go with the flow. This page is also a nice little page for you to add photos if you wanted to. So you could probably create little collages of moments in your day and maybe stamp numbers. Once you look at the collage, it shows you the day in a glance, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. And then you could use your stamps or your number stickers to add one through whatever to have like a little fun collage on that spread if you didn't want to create a mind map to represent your day. Anyways, once I'm done stamping all the things, I'm going to grab my ink pads, fillers to bring in some color, and my markers to color in some of these stamps. And also, I forgot to mention, I did stamp June 16, 2022 with my Mega Date Stamp from Studio Calico. I love that stamp. It's really hard to use. <laughs> uh, over time, it gets easier to use. Uh, it just needs practice. But I really like it for journals like this because the date is so bold and in your face. And it's a fun little add-on for your spread. Once I'm done finishing these two spreads, I'm just going to add some color to my currently list and add my arrows. I did want to speak a little bit about my photos. I've been asked a lot about this. I have been having fun with my collages. I'm using my PictureMate Epson PM400 
to print my photos. My large photos are five by sevens and I love this size. I feel like it fits really well in my journal and I've been using a five by seven to kind of represent my favorite moments or my favorite photos throughout the day. I do use the Epson semi-gloss photo paper to print on. I really like the feel. It takes the stamping really well. Like you can see here, I stamped it's getting hot in here on my photo with some archival ink and it doesn't smudge or anything and it takes the stamping really well. I also stamped sounds like summer right underneath it and then I'm going to go ahead and add all the photos. So for the collages, I've been using the Epson collage app. I forgot what it's called, but I'll try to remember to add it in the description box for you. But I've been using their app to create my collages. And like I said earlier, I've been having fun with the sizes. I'm trying to make sure they fit in nicely into my journal. Whatever works, I just go for it. I always say this, just have fun. I like to keep some space in between my photos to stamp, to add embellishments, whatever the case is. Like for my Advil photo here, I thought it would be fun to add like an embellishment underneath it or maybe stamp. So I added today was tough. I also found a three by four that said this morning. So I thought it was perfect for my weather photo. So I'm just going to trim it down and it fit perfectly in between my two photos. So I basically just add it in between the photos. It's a great way to use your three by fours and your four by sixes just because I bought one of the kits and I want to use what's in the kit as well. I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping and I'm gonna go through my kit to add a few stickers here and there and then we can move on to the next two spreads where I'm gonna be adding more photos. Oh, and I did want to mention that the Today Was Tough is a fabric piece that was a little bit too big for my taste. So I trimmed it down. I don't mind doing that. And it actually added more texture. I, I like that look. And I ended up just trimming it down and adding it underneath my photo. Now, every day I've been using my four by sixes to trim down and that's a great little add on. It adds a little header to my photos and I get to use my four by six card. I will add my photos and as you can see, I try to figure out the collage beforehand before I print. Will this fit on my journal? I believe this is a six by eight journal, if I'm not mistaken. So I kind of play with the sizes to make sure it fits. Once everything is set in the right spot, I'm gonna go ahead and stick down my photos. Now for my photos, I have the kids and I watching Stranger Things, me journaling, playing with Stitch, me working, Sabine and I cleaning the cars, me mopping as always. So there's just little tidbits from my day. They don't have to be amazing photos. I always say this, just take pictures, have fun with this, document your day. I did mention this earlier that I had purchased one of the kits, but I also wanted to use my own stash if it works. And I have this pack of die cuts that's all about self-care. And one of the die cuts said writing in my journal, which was perfect for my photo of me writing in my journal. And I found a lot of little tidbits that I can add to my spread. So I end up stamping, now playing on my screen underneath Stranger Things. I'll add some of those die cuts on some of my photos. I also wanted to add something to my mopping photo here. This mopping photo is something I do every, almost every day, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. So I thought it would be fun to just stamp 24 seven. So I grab one of my Studio Calico stamps and I stamp 24 seven with some archival ink. But because the seven is in between the two and four, I felt like you couldn't see it. So what I thought I would do was re-stamp it on some white paper and just trim out the seven itself. Uh, while I had my stamp out, I also stamped in progress. So I'm literally going to trim out that seven and stick it right over the stamp I stamped directly on my photo to fix it. Anyways, once I do that, I'm gonna trim out in progress, add that right above my photo, gonna grab some puffy stickers, 
also some old ones in my stash that has AM, PM. I'm just going to add those randomly to my photos. So for the last two pages of Thursday, I decided to go with another 5x7 photo and a collage on the opposite side. So for my 5x7, this is one of my favorite, favorite uh, dishes from my mom. It's called arayas. It's a Middle Eastern dish. And it's very simple. It's basically like meat and pita bread and a bunch of spices. It's just so, so good. But anyways, I wanted to document that because it's one of my favorite dishes. And I'm going to use a small alpha to stamp arayas in one of the labels, a black and white label, just to add right above my photo. I could have gone really creative with this and probably stamped something fun or added a nice little embellishment at the top, but I really wanted to add a title to one of my favorite dishes. So I basically just did that. I'm going to go ahead and stick down my photos on the opposite side of the spread. And with these photos, I'm documenting going to the dog park, oil change, getting ready for the pool, uh, baking cookies. So I go ahead and stick them down. But once I stick them down, I'm gonna find a three by four card that says num num. And I thought it was perfect for my collage, but I've already added my four photos in that little box. So I thought I could trim it down go ahead and add it to my collage so it's a part of my collage, but then I'm going to have an extra photo. And where do I put that photo? I will create a flip up. So creating a flip up is very easy, very simple. I just use some scrap paper and create a little fold for my flip up and I'll back up my flip up with another three by four card. So I basically was able to use two of the three by four cards on one spread and that makes me really happy. So I'm gonna back up my flip up. Well, I'm gonna use two of my photos for my flip up and then I'm gonna back it up with a three by four card that says to-do list, I believe, or today's to-do list. And it's a fun little spot for me to add a short to-do list of things I did that day. Now, one thing I forgot to add is a tab for my flip up. I'm most likely going to forget that there's a photo behind that photo. So I might go back in at some point and add a little tab for it. But I'm just so happy that I was able to use two cards on one spread, especially that I'm at Thursday at this point. So I only have three more days to use up the majority of my kit and my product. So I was kind of happy that I did that. So I'm almost done with my flip up. Once I stick it down, I'm going to grab some stamps and add some stamping underneath my collage and my five by seven photo. And I wanted to fill out that space underneath my collage. I'll also go through my stickers and my kit to add a little bit of embellishing here and there. And then I'm going to do a quick flip through. Sometimes when I go through my pages after I'm done, I find little spots that need a little something. So I will end up adding a phrase sticker underneath my mind map because there was a lot of space there for me to add something. And then I basically call my layouts done and call Thursday done. Hopefully I'll be back soon sharing Friday. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget, I will be adding all the links for everything I shared, the remarkable. Definitely if you love digitals, I definitely recommend The Remarkable for you. And again, I will be adding some links in the description box for you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye.